Hey Sagittarius, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer and I'm here today with your June 2023 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I am talking about Sagittarius, I'm talking about Sagittarius rising. If your moon or your sun is in Sagittarius, you might want to go to one of the free birth calculators. All you need is your time of birth and uh, location to determine your rising sign. Because when I talk about the houses, it is based on rising sign. So this is a really, I think, a very powerful month. We have two outer planets that will be stationing at the same degree all month. We have Saturn stationing at seven degrees Pisces, and we have Neptune stationing at 27 degrees Pisces, both of which is your fourth house. Um, but what I'm going to start with is Venus. So let me let me go there. Venus is entering the sign of Leo, which is Sagittarius's ninth house of beliefs, of foreign travel, of philosophy of higher education. It is entering Leo on June 5th, and it will begin a opposition with Pluto. Pluto is at zero degrees Aquarius. Pluto is currently retrograde. And around June 11th, Pluto will re-enter Capricorn. So what we've been seeing is that as um, Venus enters your ninth house and makes an opposition to your third house, this is really sort of this opportunity for you to assess and to look at the dynamics that you are absorbing in your everyday life, the communications that you're receiving, as well as the communications that you're implementing and having. I say this because naturally uh, Sagittarius rules the ninth house and Gemini rules the third house. Here we're seeing Venus entering your natural house, Leo, the ninth house, and then inadvertently third house of Aquarius is giving you an opportunity to really dig deep through Pluto's influence as to see what it is about your everyday existence that you want to foster and nurture moving forward. As Pluto retrogrades back into your second house, it's going to give you an opportunity to reflect on how you're making your money, how you feel about your value, how you use your voice, and Venus rules the voice. So what I'm seeing here for Sagittarius during the month of June is a lot of energy surrounding new beliefs for yourself or renovated beliefs about your talents, your skills, and how your personal family upbringing may have influenced that belief either for, you know, I don't even want to say positive or negative because sometimes people are very inspired by the negative. Other times they're completely shut down by it. So here, I think as Venus is entering the sign of Leo and making this opposition that starts off in your third house and then drifts back into your second house is going to give you a real glimpse into your own personal psychology, your own personal imprint. And I think that through that, you're going to find um, a sense of balance. It's interesting to me because when I look at the Sagittarian energy, I feel as if there is just this wee bit of Sagittarius that can sort of uh, forgive the human experience and its foibles and, and its challenges, and then sort of allow itself to move in a new direction, uh, both in connection to higher ideologies and philosophies about life, but also understanding through the diversity and through cult the the varying cultures, how different people think and value different things. So the truth is really very subjective. So Venus is going to stay in your ninth house for four months. She's going to move forward all the way to the 28th degree, and then she's going to revert back to the 12th degree before moving forward again. I think this is going to give you an opportunity to um, express yourself in new ways, and it may very well bring you um, some vacation time in a foreign country or finding yourself exploring things. Uh, 
new dynamics, uh, educating yourself in new ways. You may take up a new hobby and get very excited about that. You, a hobby could very well be like your, your family tree, your lineage, where you come from. That would be interesting to see if any of you are, are um, responding to that or, or being pulled that direction. So that's um, important. On the 11th, Pluto will um, actually be 29 degrees Capricorn. So on June 11th, you'll see that energy shift back into Capricorn. Now it's going to make a sextile to Neptune. And that sextile is actually going to go on until November. But during the month of June, I think it's going to be very powerful because Neptune is stationing at 27 degrees. Now Neptune doesn't move quickly, but that 27th degree is the Gemini degree. So there again, I'm having this idea of being able to excavate in a very deep way how I'm absorbing the everyday information that comes to me and how I'm processing that. The 29th degree is the Leo degree. And we just saw Venus, the planet that rules your self-worth, your talent, your money in the house of, of um. I'm sorry, Venus in the house of your own creativity, Leo. So I really think that there is an opportunity for you to start to put a strong foundation. If you've already laid the foundation, then it may be time to bring in the framers. If you've already laid the framing, it may be time to start to bring in the drywallers. All of these renovations on the house of your mind will inspire you into new territories that I think will make you feel more vital and more excited about life. Now, at the same time, the world around us could be experiencing a lot of chaos because this grand fixed square can be extremely overwhelming for those that are not conscious. It can feel very much like there's a box being pushed in on us. Um, I want to kind of uh, play back to the idea of the eclipses as well, because during the April, we had a solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries. That eclipse changed the moon cycle. And we have a full moon in Sagittarius happening on June 3rd. I'm actually doing a separate video on that. But because it's in Sagittarius, I'm going to talk about it a little bit here. I think this is very important because, again, the 29th degree is the Leo degree and Aries is the sign of self. Now we're having a full moon at 14 degrees Sagittarius, I'm sorry, 13 degrees Sagittarius on the 3rd of June. This is right near the great attractor. I saw a video recently with Pam Gregory and a woman by the name of Julia Balaz. It was on the Shapley Cluster. And this was very interesting to me because it uh, resonated with me. I have planets that are uh, in alignment with these points. And I bring this up because uh, the great attractor in Sagittarius is a very powerful energy. And as it speaks, you are attracting an energy. So I believe that the eclipses have started to bring an awareness to Sagittarius Sagittarius. We saw in May, we had a Scorpio eclipse that was really, uh, it was a lunar eclipse. So it was illuminating that deep psychological dynamic, which with we make our choices on. Mm -hmm. It was at 14 degrees Scorpio, which is the Venusian degree. Again, I'm going back to my self-worth, my value using my voice, and how do I make my money? And what do I believe about that? Because Aries is about courage of the self. And here, um, Scorpio is about the power and control other people have over us due to our psychological makeup. So when I see Pluto moving back into Capricorn, making a sextile to Neptune, I think that this is a real cooperative energy for me to start to let the fog move, to really dig into my creative talents. Um, for my Sagittarius is Pisces is your fourth house. So here, this is to me where Pisces is is wanting to have a dreamy home life, wanting everything to feel very 
connected and very um, cooperative. Pisces by nature is a very compassionate sign. It's a very empathetic sign. And we have Saturn and Neptune both transiting this house for you. So I think that you may have epiphanies and you're able to integrate your own personal upbringing in a way that isn't tethering you to a dark side or tethering you to it feeling incapable. Instead, it's it's allowing you to rise up like the phoenix. And, and again, these are long-term aspects so that it feels like it comes in a series of, of awarenesses that allow me to have an epiphany that then gives me the rocket fuel to shoot my desires out into the universe. We have from the beginning of the month for the whole month primarily, because Saturn is stationing at seven degrees Pisces. So first Saturn is moving forward. Then on June 17th, it's starting its retrograde and it doesn't move off that seventh degree. It is making a sextile to Jupiter. I believe the sextile with Neptune and Pluto and the sextile between Saturn and Jupiter and also the North Node is very favorable for an awareness and an ability to shift into a dynamic that is one of self-forgiveness and then reconciliation so that I can move my story forward and feel really excited about it. Jupiter is going to offer expansion and offer wealth. It's your ruling planet. Now, up against the North Node, being conjunct in Taurus is offering you an opportunity to build something sustainable as you trust that which you cannot see, but you can feel with your heart and you give yourself permission to move in that direction. Um, we're also seeing um, on the day that Saturn goes retrograde, we have a new moon in Gemini, which is uh, your seventh house. This new moon is making a square to Neptune. Now, within the seventh house, it's not just about marriage. It is about contractual relationships. It's fostering diplomacy, harmony, peace, creating and understanding the ebb and the flow of balance. We have Saturn stationing at the seventh degree. We are in a seven year. This is very much a theme of being able to sort of step above a situation and assess it from a more broad perception. And I want to offer this too, because if you're a Sagittarius and you have, um, I believe Julia said it's a 10 to 12 degree orb to the great attractor. This is a very powerful energy for you to manifest with. And I want to encourage you to go watch that video because it's very, very interesting. And it gives another layer and another um, perception to the dynamics of astrology and how incredibly big and expansive that is. Because the square to the new moon feels as if it's going to be a foghorn that blows the fog out. And it may, you know, new moons are dark, but we've had this Sagittarius full moon that illuminated something first. And that is the beauty of this last eclipse season because it flipped the moon's cycle. Normally we have a new moon, then we have a full moon. Now for the next year or so, don't quote me on the date, we have a full moon that precedes a new moon. So whatever you garnish, whatever is illuminated for you at this full moon, you'll be able to plant the seeds. Now, the square will be really planting on faith and not looking for anything um, realistic or practical to join the mix. And that's why I think it's going to be a little tense. But overall, I think it's a very powerful time of awareness and an integration of awareness and a recognition of criticism and judgment don't really serve. They actually box us in even more tightly and that doesn't serve anybody. So that's it for me, for my Sagittarius's for June. These are the aspects I think are the most important. Yes, we have Mercury going through three different signs in June, um, but that movement didn't feel quite as powerful as these long-term transits that are bringing forth long-term change.
All right. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. If you'd like to book a reading with me, my information is in the description. Please join me Sunday mornings live where I do angel readings and uh, pull a tarot card for each sign. And we get advice from the divine on how to traverse the transits for the week ahead. So, and please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and comment. I appreciate all your warm and supportive comments. All right, everybody. Peace out. I'll see you next time.